Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Life Science with Mr. Hescox. We are going to start the beginning principles of life science. And what you'll see here is that that's what we're going to talk about today. There's some pages to read. Roman numeral 28 to Roman numeral 33. And your homework is to write five sentences about what it is to be alive using the characteristics of life. In your mind, what does it mean to be alive? I want you to write three things down right now that you think are alive and three things that are not. Then share them with a friend or a partner. Pause this recording to do this now. Did you share your answers? Did you come up with some interesting things? You know, sometimes we think about life all the time, but we don't know how to describe what it really is. All living things are called organisms. They share common characteristics. The first characteristic of living things is that they have organization. They're organized. The basic level of organization is the cell. The cell is the smallest level. It is one individual tiny little compartment that can perform all activities of life. In this picture, you can see plant cells that are stacked on top of each other. Inside the cell, you'll see things like the chloroplast. This is what allows it to capture energy, the nucleus, the cell wall, and some other various organelles that we'll talk about this year. Living things must grow and develop. Probably many of you had to buy new school shoes this year because your ones from last year don't fit. The video showing here shows a tiny bean seed growing and developing. It will change over the course of its lifetime from beginning to end. Reproduction means that organisms or species of organisms must be able to make new organisms like themselves. It is very important that organisms are able to reproduce faster than they're dying or their populations can become endangered. Response. This is often called response to stimuli. A stimulus is a signal that causes a response. If I turn the light out on you, your eyes will change. If I shine a flashlight in your eyes, you'll you might be blinded and you'll cover your eyes. The flashlight is the stimulus. The response is covering your eyes. If you're in the environment or in the wilderness, you could have a squirrel is hungry, therefore it eats a nut. It could be a hawk is hungry, therefore it kills the squirrel eating the nut. The stimulus is the hunger. The response is eating the other uh, food. What do things need to live? There are three common needs of life, although I break the one into two. A need of life is not necessarily the same for all living things. All living things need energy. Most living things get their energy from the sun. That energy from the sun has to travel in waves captured by plants. We eat the plants. There are some organisms that live on the bottom of the ocean called chemosynthetic bacteria that actually get energy from sulfur in volcanoes. All organisms need water. Water is a molecule that life cannot happen without. Without water, there is no place for the reactions of life to occur. We call that a living metabolism. Nutrients. Each type of organism has a different list of or nutrients that they need. You know, we as humans need proteins and carbohydrates, while some organisms can make their proteins and carbohydrates. Finally, all living things need a living space. A living space is often called your habitat or environment. Within your habitat, you need to find all of the things you need. Within your habitat, you need to find all of the needs of life, food, water, mates, living space to cover all of those things. <laughs> 